Good evening, and thank you for joining us. My name is Jimmy James, tuned in to another edition of the London Indie Underground, which is London's only independent music podcast showcasing some of our artists, or our areas, rather, more, uh, most talented artist bands and personalities. And joining me as always, Mr. Gary Begner. Hola, Jimmy. How are you, sir? Doing well, how are you? Good, man. You know, I realized in listening back through the, the previous couple of weeks uh, after uploading them is, you know, we tend how to have I a lot. How much I swear? You, you do. Yeah. You do. But we tend to have a lot of the same dialogue. And a, a lot of it ar- revolves around you know, some of your intricacies and, and quirkiness with respect to your collections and, and so yeah. on and so forth. And you know, it's funny because I had some comments from people saying, you know, that Gary guy, he's hilarious. He's an interesting fella. He's Great. got a lot of weird collections. Yes. I mean, for those. <laughs> what are you gonna Nobody do? can yes. see me put my hands Actually, up. Whatever. They can. They can. Oh, yeah. See mm. today. This is a video podcast oh, okay. today, people. Yeah, it's yeah, video. So those That's of you right. that may be tuning in, Oh, expecting just audio. Today we have video. And I'm actually in the video this time. Yes. Most of the time it shoots yeah. past me into the... Gary Begner, the skinny fat guy. Yep. It's awesome. But yeah, quirky things. It's th- they're not really that quirky. They're just collections that nobody else may have. That's cool. I dig it. Uh, you guys may not know, but, but Gary does have a rather sizable collection of, uh, of guitars. I think 29 is the count. Oh, yeah. A bunch of amplifiers and, and Toy Story and jerseys, uh, collectibles. My, and jerseys. My game-worn and jersey collection that I love so much. And Toy yeah. Story collectors. Collect- yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't drink anymore. I don't ah. do drugs. I don't smoke. Uh. Uh, yeah. Toys. It kind of keeps me grounded. I know there's something about that movie when they came out with the toys and the toys looked exactly like the movie. And then I just thought when I was a kid, it was the, you always looked at your toys and you're like, if only. Yeah. Just kind of hit a chord. Got you. But the wife started the whole thing. I I had kicked the sure, habit. Sure, blame her. No, she will actually fess up to it. I kicked the habit. I wasn't collecting anything. And then uh, we started dating, and uh, she took me to go see Toy Story as a kind of a fun date. And uh, then for my birthday, I got, like, two toys. She didn't know the hell that was about to uh, unleash. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And now, now, it's now just she just <laughs> has to deal with your closet full of stuff. Yep. Closet. It's a house. We bought a house. <laughs> it's you like have to move yeah. to a bigger house. Yeah. I actually know somebody that has to move into a new house because they have w- too much stuff. And they're not hoarders because the, all the stuff that they own is musical and musically related. Yeah. But it's they not Siggy, have is to it? move. No, it's not Siggy. <laughs> it's Dave Zimba from The Salads. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he's looking for a new house right now because he has too much stuff. He actually started a little journal that says, What am I going to buy today? Wow. And so good for every him. day he, he puts whatever he's purchased in the journal. I this guy's got a lot of money. That's probably a good idea. I should be doing the same thing. Yeah. Because I just can't. I would be interested in seeing that journal. I'm sure. I'm sure you yeah, would. just so I can keep up with your inventory of stuff that I can potentially yeah. have access to. Exactly. Right? <laughs> you always have access. You just ask. So thanks for listening in uh, tonight. Uh, once again, my name is Jimmy James. We're broadcasting from the Vault Recording Studio at Adelaide and Princess, and, and very pleased today to be uh, joined by two special guests that we were looking forward to having them on a couple of weeks ago, but we had to toll it over to today. So joining me on my left here is Mr. Daris, uh, Darren Morrison, a producer here in London. Darren, how are you? Good, how are you? Thanks for having us. And no, thanks for having me. We were joking around earlier that you weren't wearing your glasses. Yeah. And you borrowed some really lovely reading glasses from one yeah, of the ladies I, here on the couch. I had to give them back. Can you see me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eyes aren't that bad. <laughs> and uh, to his left, my right, Mr. Bill Durst from the legendary Thundermug, which is Jimmy? where I first heard the name. Uh, and this is going back, I think, to the early 90s. We had a Thundermug cassette kicking around forever. <laughs> uh, and it was just great. And I always thought you guys were like the, the Canadian ZZ Top and in my opinion, a very blues sound, and and, yeah. uh, and listening to, to you doing a sound check earlier, it's a great preview of uh, what our listeners have to look forward to in a, in a little while, so thanks for joining us today. Oh, my great pleasure, Jimmy. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you very much. So if this is your first time tuning into our podcast, you know, what we're trying to do here, obviously, a, a apart from supporting the local uh, community and, and artists and musicians and bands, uh, but we're trying to give some perspective to both the musician, the casual musician, or the the in the budding artist or even just the you know the casual listener on you know some perspectives of from the music industry uh from both sides and you know the past couple of weeks we've had some great guests on that have been able to contribute you know their thoughts and experiences uh you know whether it was gord Pryor or even dan broadback or last week with the dyadics and kind of spanning all uh you know a, b- a bunch of different genres and a bunch of different experiences but uh you know i'm really uh, pleased to, to have you two in the studio today because you represent uh from the producer's perspective darren and having worked with bill over the years and bill obviously you've, you've uh, been there done that so to speak uh and i'm sure you're going to be able to share with our listeners today some of your uh, your cool experiences that you had over the years yes absolutely excellent so i guess to get this thing started off we should probably get to some music as we always do yipper 
And, uh, you know, we've continued to have bands that have been sending in tracks to us. And, and obviously, it goes without saying, we're very appreciative. If we don't happen to get to your music right away, rest assured, we are certainly going to. Um, but I would like to take an opportunity to showcase a band here that's going to be coming up in a couple of weeks uh, with a live uh, in-studio which I haven't even broken the news to you yet. Uh, the Messes and Miracles, they're going to be coming. Kind of saw it on the... On the yeah, record. and you know what's cool? Those guys um, formerly had a record label. Uh, my hometown. Right. So we're going to get their perspective, too, on what it's like to be, you know, the, the man, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. To be the, the blame of everybody's uh, failures. <laughs> and the last person uh, given any credit for your successes. Well, let's check <laughs> out. They sent me three new songs here, so I believe I have their entire EP. Um, but this particular track is called Every Little Bit of Me. This is Messes and Miracles on the London Indie Underground. I believe in blood moon rising. I believe in circumstance. I believe in stupid music. When it tells us all to dance I believe in letting go When there's nothing left to hold I believe in coming clean with you Messes and miracles with every little bit of me here on the London Indie Underground. So joining me to the left now, and uh, you can't see him on camera because he's kind of hiding while well, he wants to jump in, uh, Mr. Jason Rodar, our local photographer who's been coming in every week and documenting this for us. And so you can kind of put a face to the name and, uh, and see what some of our guests look like here. And uh, I know the other motivation for you, Jay, coming in today is, uh, you know, we talked about last week and you entering into the Beard Olympics. And obviously Bill sitting over there has got a pretty impressive beard, so I'm sure you two can bond over the beard a little later. <laughs> so here in London uh, I gotta say our weather is pretty crazy you know this winter uh, and the last few winters for yeah. that matter um, but you know today was I think 13 or 14 degrees outside mm -hmm. and yesterday 9 degrees yesterday was a slush fest today it's all gone and I understand tomorrow it's supposed to drop down to like minus 10 or something yeah we're supposed to have like 3 or 4 days of snow coming ahead yep. really? yeah it's like close yeah, well, I guess it's an elixir for some bad weather, right? When you get a shift, a 20-degree shift like that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can 
you can certainly imagine we're in for it. But, uh, you know, obviously the news. We news deserve it. We do? Yeah, we deserve crap. <laughs> Why? What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> Not you. It's everybody as a whole. Just, just as a city. The city elected. Yeah, it's our too karma. Many. Crap karma. Well, well, Come on. Elected too many conservatives, really. <laughs> Sorry. That makes sense. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Bad weather. No, nah, we've had it too, too easy lately. You know, I don't know if you guys follow any of the conspiracy theories or anything, and, and I have some friends that are, you know, deeply entrenched <laughs> in that. One of them is Bob, who's a recurring character on our podcast here. He happens to be sitting in the other room right now. And so, you know, one of the theories, and particularly down in, in the States, is that they're using, uh, you know, a weather modification through chemtrails, where, yeah. you know, planes go through the air and they drop these chemicals um, specifically to manipulate uh, you know the climate yeah. and you know some are suggesting that the route the ruse is you know global warming but mm -hmm. really it's the, it's the states that have been trying to con control the climate whether or not you believe that mm -hmm. and i mean this isn't a conspiracy theory podcast by any means but no uh, you're saying that somewhere out there there's an evil genius that's trying to the control the weather pinky and the brain are Dude, hard there, at work there there are evil geniuses out there in the world yeah. but i'm just not buying into everything else that's going on that's going on fair and enough and if we were that kind of podcast you and i would have a lot of reading to do just yeah. to catch up well i just watch alex jones and i get it all down yeah <laughs> but then you're just copying his show no that's true so. i don't even like that guy though yeah is it, what he's is, pretty intense they, weren't they saying the same thing as well like the, the whole and not to, uh, you know what? i'm just wondering if i should just stop now but those same chemtrails yeah they were saying that's uh that's what they were uh, using to um create zombies is that so? I uh, thought that was bath salts. Yeah, no, zombies. No, bath salts was the one that made the guy chew the guy's face You know off. what? It turns out it wasn't even bath salts. I know. Apparently it was, it was marijuana. Yeah. But I've never known anybody that got the munchies <laughs> enough to want to eat somebody's face, face off. off. Yeah. Well, the yeah I want some brownies, maybe some Doritos. Mentally some unstable. Makes you know, no sense. No. But, but that said, I does? mean, this weather has certainly had some implications and we were kind of talking offline. I mean, there's been all these warnings about floodings and high mm -hmm. street and, you know, people with basements full of water. and. Yep. It's crazy times, man. Crazy. You know, the apocalypse, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not. No, maybe not. No. But, I mean, it's definitely a, you know, a point of conversation because, you know, the weather, everybody talks about the weather. Yep. You know, you say you, if you guys are on any social media or whatnot and, you know, it happens to be a cold day and, you know, first thing people do is they wake up and step outside and update their Facebook. Yeah. Dear God, it's cold <laughs> outside. Yeah. Come on, man. There's more, you know, things to talk about. And I'm from, I'm a northern Ontario boy. Yeah. Like, don't even start talking to me about cold. Yeah. You know, you minus 15 and you think this is cold. I remember walking to school minus 50 with the wind chill factor. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. Well, actually, that's well, not true. I didn't love it at all. But. Well, see, I'm a West Coast kid, and I don't really find that this is really destroying me at all. This is West Coast weather. Yeah, I know. But, it, like, when everybody's like, oh, it's so cold or whatever, and it's whatever. My, it's like, I'm like, meh. Meh. People just want to complain. That's all it is. That's true. So, in other news, uh, they've added a second date for The Price is Right. Mm-hmm at uh, Budweiser Gardens. I haven't got my tickets yet because the first one sold out almost immediately. Is anybody going? You guys Price no. is Right fans? Drew no. Carey? No? I, I don't think I'll go. We were just talking about the jumping up and down part. <laughs> I've got the arms and all that stuff down, but I, you know. But we're, you're looking forward to it, though. It's a great thing for the town, don't you yeah. think? What's your favorite game? Oh, politics. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they have that on Price is Right? <laughs> That'd be no. pretty awesome. They did. It goes to the highest bidder. Yeah, <laughs> kind of does already, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. That'd be awesome. You could raise the most money. Yep. I'm I'm kind of a gameless guy. I have to admit that. I don't have much game. Not even a uh, board game. Um, Monopoly. No, I, I I don't know what it is. I grew up amongst a massive amount of card players. They were constantly playing cards and board games and stuff, and I, you know, I enjoyed them and all that to a small degree. She wasn't. Your I thing. don't know what it is with me. I don't know. I like you're politics, a, you're a though. Rebel. What? <laughs> you're, so you do like politics? So have you been it, to me, it's like a bit of a game. You know, study human nature and uh, see the moves that people make, and yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, you may be interested to know, Bill. Um, recently, and I talked about this on the podcast. I was invited to attend uh, a presentation uh, put on by Music Canada, and it was a presentation to London City Council, where they did a case study on Austin, Texas which is considered to be the indie music capital of North America. Yes. And Austin, Texas, after implementing a business plan, managed to grow their, their local industry from about $600 million to $1.6 billion. Mm -hmm. So a billion dollars worth of growth over a five-year period. Holy. Which is pretty impressive. Yes. Um, and it was all based on a very detailed and stringent business plan that they put into place after realizing the talent pool and the resources that were available in that market. So Music Canada yes. took uh, this example, did a case study 
and uh, did a presentation to London City Council about the, the potential that London had and a number of the parallels that were there. Yeah. Uh, so as a result of that, um, there may be, I mean, it's grassroots right now, and, and you know, and it goes without saying, is, oh, there's always posturing anytime something like this comes in. And, you know, the m- motivation is, is highly political because, you know, Deb Matthews and her constituents were there, and obviously they want the music community to rally around these people, which I think represents a big demographic for them. But that sure. said, I think there's a, a great opportunity there for, uh, for some growth in our industry. Yeah, that's exciting. You know, I'm I'm really not uh, up on the on the local news. I must admit, so I'm kind of learning that now. That's a really a big deal. So, did anybody in the council kind of go, "Hey, that sounds like a good idea. We can get behind that." And yeah, absolutely. There seemed to be uh, some interest there, and, wow. and I think you know, I want to say that you know, the music industry has been one of those that you know, it's been in some senses, you know, it's privatized, right? not necessarily privately funded but there's a lot of entrepreneurs that are trying to find their way through it uh, with very little support Um, you know some of the key points that were brought up is you know the government has a lot of money to to support and to subsidize uh, musicians Uh, and the problem has been is that you know musicians if they don't know where to look or don't know that those services are available to them they're not going to be able to take advantage and as a result of that millions and millions of dollars are left on the table um, simply because musicians don't know they're kind of ignorant to it right so yep. uh there needs certainly needs to be uh you know some awareness is generated but moreover you need somebody to kind of pick up that torch and say okay this is i'm going to lead this charge i'm going to lead this cause so the the sense that i got is there was certainly some interest there but mm-hmm. now it's you know okay well how is this going to grow legs and what are the next steps right so yep. we need we really need people in this industry to kind of step up and to kind of take hold of this and, and have a, a solid partnership there, right? And, yeah. you know, Bill, when I kind of read up on, on your history and, uh, you know, I read that you guys started off in the 70s as a cover band, at least from what I read. Um, the 60s, actually. It's, well, the, what, I, what I read, it was, the, I guess, the 70s in terms of the inception of Thunder Mug. But yeah. uh, the precursor to that was you guys playing covers. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some of the, the other guests that we've had here have been in this market for some time and kind of seen an evolution, right? And, and I wanted to ask you, I mean, from then to now, certainly there, there's been a number of changes, seemingly less venues. And, you know, maybe in some senses more for people to do. You know, the online community has allowed people to you know, get involved in any number of things, right? So from then till now, if you were to, to kind of nail down a couple of things that you would say are some key differences in terms of, you know, people's response to music or bands wherewithal or, uh, you know, what would you, what would you pinpoint or a couple uh, of things uh, that you would say? Well, I would say that startlingly, the, it's more similar than, than different. Um, young bands and young fans still generate massive amount of excitement and you know you know as you can see at the uh, what do they call it the Budweiser uh, place now and um, uh, when when I was starting out you know there, there was a massive a massive amount of ignorance in terms of the business and uh, you know, there was some smarts too, but you know, you knew to get a lawyer and things like that. But it was um, it was pretty uh, uh, the, the the pool of knowledge was small, and there was almost no industry here. As uh, I remember doing an interview on television, local television here, and they were they had to tell us, you know, like you told me about the council thing. Um, about the CRTC, there was this, what do you think of the CRTC? And we went, what's that? And the guy, well, it was like about six months old, but we didn't even know, you know, and it had a huge effect. So um, I think bands getting, uh, Canadian radio coming over to to uh, bands helped a huge amount in the 70s. Well, from, from that time, from the CRTC onward, that, that was huge. Now, uh, you know, to me, the process of art is always the same. You have to do your art. If you're a musician, um, you know, do your art, I'd say, and do original art as much as you can. But I know um, I work with um, uh, musicians. Um, oh, I haven't worked with too many people in their 20s lately, but certainly uh, uh, early 30s. And... Um, 
uh, they have so much stuff going on. It's totally amazing. It's like they're making their living in the music business. And um, it's amazing to see. But, you know, uh, really a lot of teaching um, a, uh, and uh, a lot of and I, I know I know I'll, I know you guys know this. I know you know this because this is what you your your generation does. My generation was a little slower to kind of diversify, probably because there was there was more there were record deals there there were there you you could catch some kind of ring and make it to some degree um, uh, but I still think that's all possible um, but I still think art is the most important thing so my advice would be to do original art and do do whatever sings to your heart and and what springs out of that what the the energy that that brings will open the doors that need to be opened. Um, having said that, I've, I've just been in rooms in Toronto um, at a national summit, a blues summit, that happens every other year around the Maple Blues Awards, <laughs> and everybody's, everybody's exactly the same. Uh, everybody's going, well, geez, how can I get noticed above the, the crowd here, and how can I, you know, what should I do? Should I, you know, promote, or, you know, what about this, what about that? Everybody's kind of in the same boat so I think the bands uh, you mentioned the salads I mean they're, they're fantastic I'm, I'm listening to the music and um, you know but you know not everybody can do that these days that's you know it's uh, and there was a sweet spot and if you didn't get in on that then maybe you have to wait for the next sweet spot to come along and that's one more thing if you allow me to babble on please the um, there are cycles of up and down you know the way it's promoted you know there was a time like when i started it was like uh, you know 45s and uh, lps and that was pretty much it there was maybe a television show that you could go to in kitchener i think it was called canadian bandstand and <laughs> you know you could lip sync to your record on that show uh, but there, that was about it there wasn't think about it there was no much music there was no videos there was no no internet there was no you know it, it so um uh, uh, i'm kind of mixing up mixing up my thing here i just want to say there's cycles of just, aside from the way it's promoted the music business goes up and down and up and down i've been through three cycles in my life i'm 61 so um i'm not saying they come every 20 years either it doesn't really work like that but it's sure. when i think about it it's kind of like that and, and you know it gets really bad you know and there's fewer and fewer gigs and something happens to take everybody's attention the first thing that i remember that really killed it was disco you know it sounds <laughs> so quaint doesn't it but but every, all the my theory is that all the the young ladies in my generation got jobs and then they had money and then they had really nice clothes to wear and were they going to do that at a rock concert? I don't think so, but you could at the disco. And, of course, where were the guys? They went straight there, and then everybody got married, and the way it went. But anyway, but finally it came back to uh, rock, and uh, and uh, um, I remember almost crying when I heard My Sharona on the, on the radio because it was a <laughs> rock record. It was like, whoa, don't tell me it's coming back. And it really came back with a vengeance. And it's not just about rock either. Music business came back with a vengeance for musicians. And then there were there was uh, uh, another lull, um, as I recall, in the early '90s, and then then it pushed up again, mid '90s through to maybe I don't know when I don't know when it really went to heck, but it was you know early 2000s. So then things have really changed after that. Um, Do you feel like we're on the cusp of another upswing or? Where do you feel that we're in that curve right now? I'm not sure. Do you know what it seems like to me, to be honest with you, is that instead of everybody rising together, it's like it's all split up. Uh, certain people are doing amazing. Certain are, who should be doing amazing are not. It's, it's a kind of, um, instead of everybody going up, people are getting finding a way, you know, to make it happen. Um... um uh, you know, uh, it's it's hard to you know to think about the whole business trying to hold the you know because I'm touring uh, pretty much across the country. Well, I am touring across the country now, and it's hard to think about ho to hold the whole music business in my head. But I will say this: 
if you're a musician and you're a player and you you want to work all the time go to Calgary go to Edmonton go even to Winnipeg um, uh, and you will be working all the time that's just the country is booming out there so we're here in Ontario with this kind of uh, d uh, uh, whatever you call it I want to call it a depression but uh, it's depressing a recession <laughs> and it's recession depressing. yeah and uh, we're it's tough here it's tougher in the Maritimes and then as you go west it's good so individuals do you see what I'm saying the whole industry didn't rise but individuals who are willing to get up and go over there can work and and uh, and do their thing so uh, and I'm I'm very fortunate right now myself that I'm having um, uh, an uprise in my career uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little confounded by it, but maybe that's a product of what I'm saying. Uh, it's just kind of random. It's not really random. It's the work of individuals, but it's not like everybody can get on the same thing and do it. That's what we did before. Rock rose up. All of a sudden, rock was good. Now there's lots of work. It's not quite like that now. It's what's rising up. You tell me, you know. Well, I mean, that's even tough to say. Um you know what's what's selling right now i mean pop music will always yeah. uh, be you know on the charts right sure. whether it's the taylor swifts or the justin bieber's although it looks sure. like maybe a bit of biebs fanfare is waning a bit mm -hmm. with the release of, uh, of his new album but you know it's tough to say i mean uh like i said pop music will always be there um you know metal has certainly um come a long way and i it went from in my opinion you know relative obscurity to being now more mainstream and there's a lot of bands you know these core metal bands that are, are what they do is, is impressive because the level of musicianship that it takes to be able to do that crazy uh, yes but it's they're very segmented right they've got their own you know their own following and people that follow that type of music tend to be pretty loyal to that type of music right yes. uh, and and maybe not open to you know as many genres right and I found the older that I get, and I can't speak for everybody, I can only speak for myself, I, you know, I find that my interests become a little bit more widespread. Uh, and, and, and in some cases, I'm not as ashamed to, ad well, shame isn't, isn't the right word, but I'm not afraid to admit, you know, some of the, the music that I like, right? I'm a huge yeah. Supertramp fan. Huge Supertramp fan. Really? Love Supertramp. Really? And some of my friends, you know, some of them make fun of me because I like <laughs> Supertramp. But I'll tell you... Yeah, Barbara Streisand. He loves Barbara Streisand. I was hoping that you'd I'm say Barbara Streisand. Fan, so. Barbara yeah. Streisand, yeah. I'm a total Bee Gees fan. Yeah, Bee Gees, well. But they get to ride in limos to their gigs. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah. and Darren, you've been, I mean, I've known you now for uh, a couple of years. I mean, yeah. I've been in London since 99, and, and yeah. I like to think that I, I know most of the, of the players here, and I had the privilege of meeting your acquaintance a few years back, and yeah. I know you've been, uh, you know, involved in, in these parts for a long time, producing and whatnot, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm sure you can attest to seeing some of the changes and, you know, as cyclical as things are, um, b you know, sometimes I think it's e easy maybe to be a bit oblivious to that because you kind of get focused on what it is that you're doing and not perhaps realizing some of the things that are happening around you. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure that, you know, from your experience, you can you can see that there's, you know, definitely a need for, you know, that upswing or a need for a change. I mean... Uh, it's not any, anything that I can necessarily pinpoint and say this is what we need to do. But one of the things that we've been preaching here all along is, you know, and to your point, Bill, if people are segmented and kind of doing their own thing, and, um, y and that makes it a little bit more difficult for, for bands to work together, right? It, you know, really, we need to be supporting each other, um, you know, appreciating each other's music telling you know people about each other's product and whatnot i mean you and you and i were talking kind of offline there earlier we're both producers in a market that's a lot of them are here right but we got to work together you know we've got to yeah. we've got to stick together well i think what i what i've found is the artists that i've been dealing with <laughs> personally uh I mean, it needs to be sustained. There's not like this money thing or this support from the community or the government or whomever. It's important because the, the artists that I want to record or I want to produce, they're gigging. They're playing all the time. Right. And that's how they're surviving. And a lot of them don't have the extra money to come in and 
cut a couple of good singles or a record or whatever it is that they want to do because they're living and they're good but i don't have the means it's it doesn't make sense see this is where we get caught we want to do it but if if there's no money everybody suffers they don't get their material or they get bad recordings and we can look through that i can look through crappy recordings and go that's a great song but a lot of people don't they hear bad sounds and go oh it's terrible right even like a live gig. you know we've played live gigs your sounds bad bad the people walk out and go they're terrible it's just the sounds bad or the sound man's bad mm-hmm. so if there's a spot in the community where money is available or everybody wants to work together then it can be shared and everybody get, gets the chance to have a great sounding song or record and guys like us can pay our hydro to record it <laughs> right and that's the reality because all the people i love to record they're all working gigging musicians and they're paying their rent or mortgages that way so to re- even be able to record them it's there's no time because they're gigging right or they can't rehearse the stuff i want to record why didn't you rehearse well because they they had to play friday night and it's sad because you sometimes don't even get the best takes from that so that's my blarbling on that one i think a little bit of funding whether it's SOCAN or whatever grants or whatever funding they can get from the community would be good for all of us. And I, and I agree with you. And I, I think the awareness is that, that key piece there, right? Yeah. I, I just have a grant news. Please. Um, the factor Canada council and, Oh, it was a local Toronto funding association government money six million bucks they give or you can get a grant from just if you live in toronto isn't that wonderful anyway but the other two big ones have just severely changed their format you guys will like to hear this all the older folks that were in there and kind of stiff ass and this you know i don't know if you try to get a grant but it's horrendous certainly and uh so all the older people there just happened to be a movement in both organizations uh, Factor and Canada Council, and they um, have brought in a whole bunch of new people, and um, they were there. The actual people <laughs> were there at this summit meeting I was at uh, uh, last weekend, and um, encouraged everybody to um, uh, get to 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 you know communicate with them. If you don't get the grant, phone and ask why. Aha! Mm-hmm. Don't feel beaten. Phone and ask why. They will tell you yep. because they want you to get the grant. So um, that's happy, happy, happy news for anybody who's ever tried to get a grant or somebody who's thinking of getting it. Right. They've, be, they've decided to become a lot more available again they were at personally at the summit these are people right from the canada council and that's factor excellent. so there's grant news you know that's exciting i mean you know i think at some point there needs to be a bit of a changing of the guard you know as as music evolves and and the people need to evolve Absolutely. with it right and if Absolutely. you have the same people that are doing the same thing over and over you know are they passionate about what they're doing maybe they are maybe they're not yeah. it's hard to say I, I think it goes without saying that if you're doing the same thing for years and years and years yeah. You know, do they understand the yeah. needs of the of the people coming up now in the environment now? Right. I mean, when you're pretty separated from that, um, and you're on the other end of it, you may not realize, uh, yeah. you know, the benefits and the implications that you know a grant has on on somebody's career, right? And you don't necessarily know where they come from, what their motivation is, whatever the case may be. On, on the other hand, if you have people that are in that role that come from that and are familiar with that. Um, you know, I think it maybe even makes it that much more compelling, but that's certainly fantastic news. I know, I know like I have a friend of mine that his, one of his jobs is that he consults with people to help them fill out these applications uh, properly, because if you miss certain details on it, it's, uh, it's garbage to like, and and it's crazy how difficult it is to procure some of these monies, but that's one of the things that they need to do is make it a a lot more streamlined and, and the communication factor. And, and going back to my point earlier, when I say we're all in this thing together, I mean, I, I can only, uh, from my experience when I was coming up and I was younger, there was a bunch of bands that used to play together, but I always felt that ego kind of got in the way of things. And, you know, because one band would feel that, you know, you know, they were the band Mm -hmm. or, you know, maybe, 
weren't as respectful to some of the other musicians in town and felt that they had a sense of entitlement because of how long they've been playing and it's kind of looking over their shoulder and going oh here comes these kids like you know kind of dust them off you know and you know ego is is ultimately i think what gets in the way of of success because really you know as as good as you think your your band might be or as great of an artist as you might be there's a number of other people that are trying to do the same thing um so we're really at the end of the day you know we're all trying to get to the same goal so let's yeah. work together right yeah. and let's create that awareness yeah. and it's going to create opportunities for many people i mean if a band comes out of london that's signed uh to a record label i mean single single mothers recently prior to that was baptized in blood baptized really put london on the map for that brand of metal nice. right and put a lot of attention into southwestern ontario so you know why people wouldn't want to work together uh you know to try to build a scene as opposed to you know being in it for themselves i think you know when you're selfless about it and you're working with others and you're trying to create that attention and create that awareness is when you create opportunities not only for yourself but you know p perhaps provide more sustainability yeah well i think that comes with age because you remember yeah. what it was like when you're 20 right well that's what i've I'm heard saying, the same yeah. conversation on from chris cornell was talking about it on the radio when pearl jam and all the nirvana and they hated these guys and you know this stuff has happened to them it happens in the other parts of the world too this is the great thing about getting older because you start to become a nicer person <laughs> and you become selfless, right? When you're 20, you're trying to make it and you're stepping on who's ever toes that you're going there. You're not really thinking about now, Some of them are, right? but that's the beauty of... And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. we've been very fortunate to feature some bands here that really kind of exemplify that, uh, you know, we're all in this together philosophy and they've been promoting each other's bands and, and rallying people to go to their shows and, you know, making a yeah. point to go to band shows and to pledge support and, you know, to gig together, you know, try to DIY a tour, whatever the case may be, right? Because, yeah. you know, like I said, you, ego can certainly get in the way of all that. Wouldn't that be great if they opened up a couple more places because there was places to play again? Well, that's one of the things that we talked about at that, uh, at that Music Hand presentation is that they certainly need some more venues because you know we've had a few of them burned down mm -hmm. and a few of them less, less dance clubs more live yeah well you know and and to kind of circle back to what bill was saying you know what's popular right now i mean you know all this dubstep and djs and stuff like that i don't know what your opinion is on that but i mean it sells out almost instantly and yeah. people are willing to pay 50 bucks a ticket or 60 bucks don themselves in a bunch of neon and get mm -hmm. some glow sticks and you know go give her down at the music hall yeah. and, and that's yeah. great you know you know i remember my first beer when i was 20 you know <laughs> well our parents never got us unless you had parents that got you but that's how it goes right you know i mean the younger generation they're not they don't get it and then they get a little older they get to about 24 and then you see them wearing a doors t-shirt you got it right right we're going to come back Zeppelin to this conversation shirt. Yeah. uh because i got a, a couple of cool uh i'm sure we can kind of go on that for a minute but i need to get to some music here and i want to take a second actually to do a shout out uh to our bro of the show mr chris brito from mr tasty it's his birthday today so Excellent. happy birthday and uh those guys were actually just in the studio at siggy meyer studio out in um beach road yep. just outside of goderich and cutting some new tracks and we're looking forward to getting them so we can spin them for you so mm -hmm. please send us some tracks, boys. As soon as you get them, we'd love to hear them. In the meantime... I want to hear the uh, Beach Road theme song they did. Did they do one? <laughs> oh, yes. you know what? I did see a post yeah. about that. I want to see that. I want to hear that one. Siggy. He's probably listening. Hopefully. Up. Send it to us, please. All right. So this is Mr. Tasty with Slow Down Baby on the London Indie Underground. Oh, 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 hey, 
Mr. Tasty on the London Indie Underground. Once again, happy birthday, Mr. Burrito. Love you guys. Great little band. Mm -hmm. Got some good songs. Yep. So we're getting tweets here. Gary, how's the stream? Are we getting some combo good, on good. there today? Yeah, yeah. We got some uh, somebody thanking us. One Mitch Patel asks, saying great info about the Factor Grants. No, Andrew Vandervoort uh, just saying the whole thing about the support thing, how important it is. Right. Andrew was here the other day, actually. He plays in a band called Elias. Andrew? Oh, uh, okay. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah. Because I think I called him Alias. You did, yeah, and it's Elias. Yeah, Elias. Yeah. And I actually, I've been talking to Andrew online about Yeah, some they're, uh, some he stuff was here the them. other day telling me they're working on a, uh, on a full length yeah. right now, and they're going to get us some tracks here because you know, we're looking forward to spin them. A um, yep. couple things for you. First off, if this is your first time listening to our podcast and you'd like to check out some of our back catalog, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash London Indie UG. And I think I've uploaded our 16th show, and tomorrow I'll be uploading our 17th show, which featured a live performance with the Dyadics last week, which was fantastic. Still, so you're going to want to yeah. make sure to check that out. And, you know, we've been privileged here at London Indie Underground. We've pretty much had, uh, you know, some of the most experienced people from our market uh, on our show to give some feedback. Uh, and, you know, we couldn't be more thankful. What started out as just something for fun, a couple of guys broadcasting out of the closet, so to speak, turned into this thing that, uh, that the community has embraced. And uh, we're definitely uh, appreciative of that. But really, it's not about us. It's about you. And we want to do our best to try to help you and to help the scene. And incidentally, if you happen to be in a band and you would like to have your music featured, we can do that for you because that's what we do. Just drop us an email at londonindieug at hotmail.com. With listen, the MP3, no more links. Yes, please do do me a favor because I continue to get links. And listen, I want to go and check out your band's page, and I don't mean any disrespect, but I'm a busy man, and I just don't have time to go hunting around for files. So when you send us your track, send us some MP3s, just so we're not clogging up our, our Hotmail account with big wave files. Mm -hmm. Compress it down to like a good compression, maybe like you know 320, 192 at minimum. And make sure you label it accordingly so that I know what it is. Because mm -hmm. we ran into a bit of a problem last week where I spun one band where I thought was one band. Yeah. Turned out to be another band. I believe it was Andrew's band. It was Andrew's band. No, Andrew's band was fine. It oh, wasn't okay. Andrew's band. It was, I don't even remember which okay. band. Either way. I'm sorry, that band that I can't remember your name right now. <laughs> I apologize. But yeah, even don't like after me. we said last week, every week we keep saying, please don't send us links to your band's page. Because we don't have time to keep clicking through everything and listening. And then I just notice a whole bunch of people just keep sending links. Like, hey, yeah. check out my band. It's like, hey, no. Yeah, we like links. Yeah. I mean, I like them. But Spicy links. I like those. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Just saying. That's another podcast. Mm -hmm. That's the After Hours podcast. That's the After Hours, yes. Bow, chicken, wah. No. no. <laughs> uh, Want to give a shout out to Insomnia, uh, Insomnia Radio Canada. They do some podcasting as well, and they've been uh, pumping our tires here. They've been tweeting us. Uh, they're actually going to be feature, uh, featuring Mr. Tasty Band on their podcast at 10 o'clock. I don't have a link to them, but uh, if you want to send it to us, guys, we'd be happy to retweet it for you. We're all in this together. No problem at all. We just got a tweet from the Creek Creekside Strays, too. They're, uh, they're pumping our channel, too. So thank you so much for the support. This is awesome. So, Darren, uh, earlier we were talking about, you know, the 20-year-old listening to whatever it is that they're listening to and kind of figuring it out a little bit later and conversation that I had with a bunch of people that I used to work with and, and these are people that would go to see uh, you know the London Music Hall to go see you know any of these DJs which I don't even know any of the names Skrillex uh, Dead Mouse and all that yeah. stuff. my son likes that stuff which mm -hmm. is cool so whatever I'm, I'm don't happen to be a fan myself because you know that for me there's just something lost in sitting in front of a computer playing your music you, you know sound like your mom Maybe, maybe a little bit. She didn't like that <laughs> rap crap. She might be listening right now, and she always yeah. used to, why are you guys playing that rap crap? She couldn't stand it. Not that I was a big rap fan, but I did like Tone Look and Run DMC. But anyways, that's a different story. So I talked to these kids at, sc at, at work, and I'd say, uh, you know, well, let me ask you something. So what is it that you listen to right now? What's the artist that you like that you're going to see? And, you know, it would be some, you know, dubstep artist or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, okay, so let me ask you something. So... When you have kids and you're, you know, let's say you're 40 or you're 45 or however old you are, you know, do you think that you're going to be driving down the street and listening to this stuff in your car? And not one of them told me, oh, yeah, for sure. I'm like, ah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It's not really old music. Well, I think that the flavors don't like uh, me as myself growing up you had your bands and they had big record deals and they did more than one record i mean now you've got singles and they're gone tomorrow mm -hmm. i mean they had those back then too uh but 
you had those certain group of bands that were great bands and they continuously put out good records right mm -hmm. that's the yeah. difference you didn't you know it's one thing about wearing a t-shirt with the of a band that has one song and eight of the singles on or eight of the other tracks on the record stink right yeah but uh, i know i've got probably about nine or ten tapes under my bed in my little tape holder like deep purple and all those classic bands that had eight or nine great records yeah those same people that you know years later <laughs> yeah. work because I worked with the same yeah. group of people for about ten years, mm -hmm. right? And so five or six years later, and they're listening to Led Zeppelin. And mm -hmm. I'm like, there you go. Yeah, you figured it out. Not that I necessarily think that Led Zeppelin is the exemplification of, you know, rock you, yeah. music, but yeah. certainly, I mean, yeah, you know, they're one of my favorite bands, and I think they kind of really paved the way for a lot of other artists with their sound. I think I was really lucky. I, I was. I remember being. I don't know how old I was. Maybe eleven or ten. And my mom got me this, like you know, like the, the old Easy Bake Ovens, but it was a turntable with speakers <laughs> built in underneath. And she got me a Gene Simmons solo record, Hotel <laughs> California, Bee Gees, Whoa. and uh, I think uh, what's the Beatles record with Maxwell Silverhammer? Uh, that one. I should know. That uh, record. Abbey Road. Was it Abbey Road? It yep. could have been Abbey Road. Yeah, and uh, Steve Miller, uh, I think a Triumph record. Like wow. she bought me all these great records and I was lucky. So it's different, right? Like, yep. I mean, she said, here's some music. So, and then, then she got me a little drum kit, a little satin steel kit for 50 bucks. I don't know where she got that thing. I'm downstairs with my brushes going, smacking away at them, trying to play Saturday Night Fever, you know? So that's maybe why I'm a little bit more educated and that way of appreciating all different styles of music and getting it you know? for me it was right? iron man yeah black nice. sabbath nice. so i remember uh, hearing that as a kid and I, my dad played it on a cassette or something and i mm. remember it scared the hell out of me mm -hmm. at first because i hear this voice oh, yeah. I'm iron man i'm like oh dear god yeah but yeah. then the more i started to listen to that music yeah. and up until then i mean certainly the beatles i listened to like jay giles band and yeah. Like oh, yeah a bunch of a bunch of stuff right it was kind of spanned everything super tramp yeah uh james brown all kinds of stuff but then finding black sabbath and then sure. you're know, listening to bill ward on drums and going man i want to yeah. play drums like that life-changing so concert experiences too right yeah, yeah. i remember jesus uh, london gardens van halen one Diary of a Madman and Blizzard of Oz. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Ozzy was my life-changing experience at rock concerts. It was like, I was young and he just got out of this mental institute. And it was all this stuff that was, you're not educated to know what really happened to his life until you got, you know, now that he's got books and you can read right. about what really happened. But those life-changing concerts were, were like, that was happening. London mm -hmm. Gardens was happening. And every other weekend in the summer, there was Ted Nugent and Rush. And mm -hmm. it was happening in the city. I remember that downtown everything what a difference bill do you remember did you have a life-changing gig that you played that you know i'm curious if maybe that's when you realized that you know this was your calling or you know that's maybe when you thought okay this is this is what i was meant to do now i'm i'm full-fledged now i've you know i've made it or anything to that extent <laughs> Do you remember one? Those are several different gigs, really. Yeah. Yeah. My go to the concert uh, thing was um, uh, Dominic Triano and the Mandela at the London Arena. And uh, he, Dominic Triano came on and the music stopped. And it was kind of a psychedelic rhythm and blues, psychedelic soul, they called it. And it was kind of a heavy music, but it was based on rhythm and blues. And the music stopped, and and Triano hit this note, and it he, he was making the guitar scream. And I was 14 years old, and I got a flash right up bottom of my spine, right at the top of my head, and I knew right then I I had to do that. I had to do that. Um, I wrote my first song when I was 10. And I had a little band when I was 12, and I'd written 50 songs by the time I was 13. So I, I, I was kind of headed there, but man, that was the confirmation right there. 
oh, you know, I don't, you know, it's kind of egotistical to say, but I remember a gig when I was 15, a year later, and that's, this was in, now uh, I was playing uh, in one of the more popular bands in the city, and I remember playing that gig and thinking I was the best guitar player in the <laughs> town. <laughs> well, you are what you I are, I guess. I don't know what I, you know, I don't, you know and, and which is to say, I thought I'd played a little better than the most popular guy in the most popular band. Uh, it, but uh, that was kind of uh, that was uh, kind of satisfying. Um, but then you know we were talking earlier about competition and stuff, right? And uh, versus cooperation, and that's that's. A, I, I don't know why I got into that right now, but I, I I found that I would rather have cooperation. But what the way it was for me when I was young it was competition. You know, but there was against that background was the music business looming large and there was always deals to be got in the states and mm -hmm. if you couldn't get them here you could get them in the states and it, you know it would so there was a kind of unity in so you could compete within it but there's always friendly competition between bands you know well, surely yeah. to goodness you know if somebody wants to come up with the best song in a while or or uh, you know do an outrageously good gig or something like that yeah it's like the, the competition part's good it's, you yeah. got to keep because it if there's no competition, then you're going to have guys phoning it in, right? Just, yeah. you know, the, the competition part's good, but it's just, it's still the support part of it. You know, yeah. if like, if I'm, if, if, if you're playing a gig and the band that goes on, you know, the, the opener always wants to be better than the headliner. It doesn't matter where you play. You want to be the one that leaves the mark on the crowd. Of course. So then it's like, but at the same time, when you're done, you don't want to be the, the headliner going like, fuck, those guys blew, you know, or, or bad mouthing them because you just got stood up. Like, you know, you just got showed up by these, by another band. So the competition part is always, in my opinion, it, it really keeps you going. If, you, if, you're, if your well opening said. band totally kicks it, when it's your turn to go on, you really got to bring... Oh, that's so much fun. You got to bring your A game, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah when, uh, and when it falls apart, you just know it. Like yeah, it's, it's, yeah. That's the whole quicksand thing. doesn't matter what you do. You're, you're supposed to hit in a C and you're, you're playing the wrong notes and you're just like, this is the worst day ever. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I remember when I was younger and we used to play in Battle of the Bands. It yeah. seemed to oh. be the thing to yeah, do, right? We used to right. play yeah. in Battle of the Bands. And because of that, I mean, egos would divide bands. You know, you'd have guys, that, you know, you can't stand that guy. I don't like that drummer. He thinks he's better than me. Yeah. Or, you know, I don't like that guitar player. He thinks he's all that. Yeah, picking apart rigs. <coughs> well, yeah, yeah. You know, imagine being in the Beatles and they're all that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And and then I realized, like, you know, I've competed in the FM 96 last band standing competition yeah. uh -huh. for, uh, you know, a couple of years. And I think we placed second one year and third one year. And That's good. And, you know, almost make it there, but, you, you, you know, whatever. And, and for me, uh, you know, the, the prize, what was the prize pack that was on the line was, like, recording time and, yeah. and a merch package. And, you know, we kind of already had that. And But the reason that we went into it, because, you know, you, you got some airtime through or at least some advertising through FM 96. And But I found, it, you know, my attitude had really changed towards that sort of thing, right? Because as much as it was a competition... You know, it was, I wanted to see, you know, what London had for talent. And yeah. and in watching some of these bands that I'd never heard of that potentially may have not been able to play in that venue or been a part of that and kind of discovering all this talent and going, wow, man, where have these guys been? Why aren't they, haven't been around before? And then it was less about a bit being a competition, but more of it being a showcase of some of London's finest, you know? Yeah. And then at the same time, you had the high school band that, brought in that you know every relative that they had and they ended up winning <laughs> yeah, yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> because of fan voting but you know and they were a good band actually i've got one of their songs here we could probably mm. play for them a little what's bit with on. this thing too about london um where um there's certain bands that i had no clue of and then and then i hear that they're playing huge gigs in japan or malaysia i can't remember the weekend was it and I don't. I don't know them. I. I met. I don't think I met them. Uh, I, I. I apologize if I have, but I don't think so. I did never see them play. I didn't see them playing around. Did you see them playing around the weekend? Did they, yeah. Did they play around forever? I didn't know that they were from here. I thought they were from Toronto. See. Yeah, but I could be wrong though. I know they've just played here. They they were on hiatus for a while. Well, I'm pretty got, sure that they're us. from here. Um, or and or Kitty or mm -hmm. uh, is it? Um, yeah, I learned a lot about Kitty when Gord <laughs> Pryor was here the other day. Okay, yeah, about their tour. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that it was as, as extensive and as rock and roll as it was. Oh, right. they played with. Yeah, like yeah. Some yeah. exactly. They played with, but yeah. they've go they've gone. They didn't bother being here. They just kind of left. There's another young singer uh, girl. Um, oh, I wish I could remember her name. Uh, 
I don't want to get it wrong, but uh, she's very good. And I first saw her um, here in a concert with Ron Sexsmith, and now she's kind of all over. She, but she Sleen? left. Who? Sarah Sleen? No. No? Okay. But in there kind of like that okay. one. Yeah, and good songwriter. Oh, Dana Manning? No, I think mm -hmm. it's... Um, Oh my! Is is it is it is it another Sarah Mc, McClelland or something like that? I don't know. Sorry, you know what I, think I, I, I apologize exactly to her. About. She's a really good artist too. She is, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I find that kind of interesting. And I'm going to say something else, which is really maybe going to, I hope, isn't too depressing, but compared to Kitchener, London is not happening. That's my opinion. Sorry, mm -hmm. compared to Kitchener. <laughs> Um, Are you Kitchen, talking in October? I'm talking about uh, I'm talking about the musical community that you're trying to get together right now. Right. Well, I mean, Kitchener has like Koi Festival and you know, well, you know. they have a they have a blues festival that's funded by the government that brings in sixty five thousand people. Right. That's the town. That's right. what that's kind of what you were alluding to when with this presentation right. to the council, and but I'm 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 I myself am not happy about. Now let me put it in a positive way. I think London's got a lot more potential than what's what's going on. Yes, completely. Certainly in and, that, in and, that, yeah, and that was big time. The key point. All the musicians, all the energy, the energy just here. You watching you do this is amazing. I mean, there's a ton of energy going on. Uh, and I uh, look at it, it's just like this. Okay, the Bring mayor that. of this town, Joe Fontana, is a musician. He's a drummer. That is right. And he knows all about it, and he's played gigs, and he's done the whole thing. So maybe it's just a righteous time. Maybe things are are going to break really nicely. I I love to hear about that presentation that you you were saying, but I want to say it plain. You know, I'm an old guy. I just want to say it plain. I just say this: Hey, everybody in London, you know, that's listening to this, you let's you know follow Jim Jimmy here and 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 get whip up the scene because or even better go down and take a look at what they're doing in Kitchener and see what they've done and it's a marvelous community there with 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 elements of what you're trying to put together here that's great and and London is you know it's got it there's no reason why this couldn't be the frickin music ca capital of southwestern Ontario we you have know some of the most unbelievable unbelievably talented musicians yeah. here in this town yeah Oyard and Fanshawe um, bring oh, yeah. a huge amount of talent to this town. Yeah. And a lot of them end up staying, you know, yeah. staying because of the yeah. cost of living here is sure. very affordable. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of places to play. I mean, there are some great promoters here in this town and some great people that are trying to do their best. But That's we true. need a lot. We need more venues. We need more, uh, you know, city council needs to loosen up over things like, you know, sound restrictions and bylaws, right? I mean, because of, because of that, you know, the city is hesitant or promoters are hesitant to put on shows at Harris Park because of the bylaws with respect to sound, because they're not allowed to go over certain decibels and they're fined if they do go over. Um, case in point, last year's Rock the Park. There's a, they have a, a decibel meter that they hold up, and if they go over its sustained peaks, and if it goes over the sustained peak, I forget what it was, like 100 dB or whatever yeah. the number Ooh, was. Sure and that, and yeah. if it's sustained peak for three or five seconds or however long, then there's fines that are implemented. Um, so, I mean, it makes it difficult for them to want to wanna put on shows like that because there are, you know, there's some red tape. Now, that might be a small piece of the, the red tape pie, if you will. But still, well, I, I think mean, that's an excellent example mm -hmm. of how Joe can influence the council. I Joe, who, who I did campaign for when he was running for uh, parliament. You know, I have aspirations to have Joe on, on our program. Oh, you should. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, and I figured, why the heck not? It's, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't if you don't try, it's never going to happen. And mm -hmm. I've kind of been always one of those people that, that's a proponent of if you say something, make it, you got to make it happen. He's either going to say yes or no, right? Right, so it's worth a shot. Yeah. It's worth a shot. I know Joe was involved. My roommate, uh, Ian Gifford, um, spearheaded the campaign to have Jean Gameshi um, from CBC's Q Radio come to London uh, at the Grand Theatre and uh, um, Ian was a big proponent of that and he got the mayor involved he had a meeting at the mayor's yeah, office excellent. and then in chambers they wore the Q uh, shirts oh. and as a result of that I mean they put a lot of attention onto it and, and 
Jean chose to come here out of a, a number of cities that ended up vying for it as a result of this viral campaign that was started off by a simple tweet from Ian Gifford, right? So it's it wonderful. Pretty, That's so. wonderful and good for Ian too. The uh, I think I have a feeling that Joe Fontana would just love it if 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 there was an increase in uh, the music business here in this town and he could be a part of it. I, I'm sure he would. I'm sure he would. Well, let's here's hoping that we can get him here and at least give him some perspective, right? I, I had the opportunity yes. to be featured in a documentary that was presented to him and city council. And um, when given that chance, I, I certainly spoke my piece and, and said what I thought and, and, you know, in a respectful way. Yeah. Um, but I you certainly like an opportunity to elaborate on that a little bit more. And, and I don't represent myself. I represent everybody because, I you know, I keep hearing the same things from people, you know, week to week. We need more places to play. We need more support. We need, you know, more money from, you know, we need more recognition of what we're trying to do. And ultimately, um, I would argue um, that musicians are kind of the keepers of and artists in general are the keepers of the spirituality in our society as well. I would say that it would, you know, just boosting up musicians would be very healthy, not only money-wise for the musicians, but also for th the community. Well, the money and goes right back in, right? Yeah, well, yeah, and the spiritual part of it as well. Did you know that in a, um, certain countries in Africa, certain sections of certain countries, that the wealthiest man in the village, his duty was to look after the musician and his family and make sure that they're fed and housed so that they're free to make music for the community. I could get down with that. Mom, are you <laughs> listening to that? Yeah. You hearing this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen. Great conversation, gentlemen. We're going to cut to some music here, and then we're going to feature um, Bill doing an acoustic performance as part of the Indie Spotlight. And, and uh, when we come back from your performance, Bill, I'd like an opportunity to ask you about you know some of the gigs that you performed in, and uh, you know, and some of your history, um, because you know some of our listeners may not be familiar with your body of work. Absolutely. And I'd like an opportunity for them maybe to get to know you a little bit more Absolutely. intimately and sure. uh, and what you're all about. Sure. Um, but uh, preceding that is going to be uh, some of your tunes that uh, we had the privilege of listening to earlier. It sounded great, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I'm going to spin a track here. We're going to set up. Uh, with Bill and we, when we come back from the break Bill Durst on the London Indie Underground so coming up next this is the Black Frame Spectacle with the Mob Awaits
the black frame spectacle with the mob awaits here on the London Indie Underground. So I had posted it up. We're very pleased today to be joined by Mr. Bill Durst from the legendary Thunder Mug, who is going to uh, grace us with, I think, three or four selections um, from various projects that he's done. When he comes back after the break, uh, we're going to get into a little bit more discussion. Do you want to bear with me here for one second? All right, so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Durst. Uh -huh. <laughs> trouble song it's a brand new song just penned it just came into the air out of the spiritual realm written by myself and my writing partner Jody Angelus you might hear this one on our new CD it's called what is it called now I can't remember fly away fly away home hmm fly away home Why 
should we pretend when we both know the answers love is more than words it's like a song about an angel who took a chance on love now fly away fly away fly away home fly away fly away fly away home don't you worry my friend I will stand by you be your shelter from come on me and it's always gonna be that way why should we pretend when we both know the answers love is more than words it's like a song When you're far from home And you really, really need someone To tell you everything will be alright Why should we pretend When we both know the answers Love is more than words It's like a song About an angel Who took a chance on selection for this evening's internet's broadcasting web heavy event on the London Indie. Now, I hope I'm getting that right. Tell me what it is, Jimmy. Come out here and tell me what it is. London? London Indie Underground. Oh, the London Indie. I'm in the underground too, if you, if you can see. We're down about five flights. This is the underground, the London Underground, London Underground, London Underground, London, yes it is. Alrighty, now to prove that I'm really up to date, this next song is, the melody is 500 years old. Love her, 
wound up on that train Perhaps he'll die upon this train Maybe your friends think I'm just a stranger my face you never will see no more Oh, but there is one promise that he has given I'll meet you on God's golden shore He'll meet you on God's golden shore <laughs> Thank you. All righty now. I'd like to do a song called Angels Fly. Angels fly, cause they take themselves lightly Life can be sad, oh, life can be happy You know it's down to you and me The night lasts long, but the sun shines brightly Sunglasses on and you got no worry Angels fly, cause they take themselves lightly You know that love can take you there If you only show someone you care and If you wonder why angels fly Love is lighter They take themselves lightly Life can be sad Oh, life can be happy You know what's down to you and me The night lasts long But the sun shines brightly Sunglasses on And you got no worry Angels fly Cause they take themselves lightly Sounds like me. Angels fly Cause they take them songs lightly Oh yeah Oh And it's over to you, Jimmy, from the London Underground, Indie Underground.
sees When we're up, I'll drink her up She calls me back, I'll lead her on Me and my friends, she'll never know Wear my jacket to the show In positions I can't perceive Cruel girls, mean guys, and that leaves me Hurting in my lungs A man that smokes for the show in the road Cause I'm having fun It's two weeks till it's over My friends are never sober here in the sky with snowbirds here on the london indie underground one of the many bands that has sent us in some tracks as a matter of fact i just downloaded those today and we just got a message from them uh, just a short while ago asking if we can play it and you know sometimes it's not necessarily top of mind but if you send us a quick little message and say hey jimmy can you play our track we'll be happy to spin it for you and Bill is pointing at the screen here because i haven't turned the cameras over so mm. we got to get our mugs back on the screen here one second Nobody needs that, really, but still. Bam, there you go. You got the double shot view. I'm going all out here. Last mm -hmm. time it was just a single camera. Now I got two in here. Two, yeah. Although I'll tell you, I've been pining over some struggles here with my interwebs, but I uh, finally managed to figure it out. And those of you that uh, are venturing into podcasting and are trying to figure out the technology that you have to use with this, let me tell you, it's trial and error. Many errors. Finally, many, many. finally success. You Many areas that I have nothing to do with. I just show no, up. but you just show up with mm -hmm. your laptop and my your face. And my microphone. And there you go. Bring some guitars, would you? No. <laughs> so, Bill, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Mm. Oh, that was awesome. My great pleasure. Fun to play. You know, I know your, uh, I mean, your career is pretty storied. Uh, you know, I was reading online recently that you're considered um, one of the top ten songwriters in Canada. And uh, furthermore, you're considered to be one of the best slide guitar players um, so having said that, well, I'll see you later then. <laughs> <laughs> Doing Sorry. this for free? What? <laughs> so to really? have you come on the show is uh, is uh, is flattering to say the least. And, well, and Darren, obviously, thank you too for for yeah, helping no to problem. make that happen. I know you two have a, a great working relationship, and uh, you know I, I really appreciate you two coming the time, taking the time to oh. come down here and perform for us. Well, personally, it's my honor to be on the show and on the show with Darren, my producer as well. We don't do a whole bunch of media together. We don't do talking together or anything we actually don't talk to really but <laughs> he says he'll replace my guitar parts when i go home and <laughs> well he's uh, looking at my career's going up so i i, I don't argue <laughs> with him <laughs> <you know. laughs> 
So what do you have coming up now? I, you know, I understand you might be working on some new stuff, or I know you have an album that came out recently. Yeah. Which is I'll put the graphic up on here on the screen so people can see. <gasps> so what can you what can you tell us about this? Um. Uh, this was okay. Uh, we're, what's going on right now? You mean like? Well, what, tell us about. When this I saw first. the album cover, all yeah. I wanted to tell you was that it was definitely yellow. I mean, there's, there's no That's doubt about that. Well, that was, okay, this is a wonderful story. It's an awesome story. It involves an awesome decision from Darren. And, and uh, so we're playing uh, at a gig, uh, which was a bit of a tough gig uh, to get together uh, at the London Music Hall Club Lounge or whatever it was. And, uh, and uh, finally the gig came and it was like, oh my God, I just want to play because that's about all, of, all the pleasure I'm going to get out of this gig is playing and just so let her rip, you know. And... Um, um, they have a nice board there. I don't know if you know, um, you know the board. It's a oh, very yeah. sweet board. It's a digital board, shall it, we yes, say. Yes, it is, yeah. So it's compatible with all the digital recording stuff or digital recording stuff. And uh, at any rate, um, we played the gig, and it was a good gig. It was like one of those gigs where, you know, uh, one guy starts playing good, and the other guy starts playing good, and the third guy goes, oh, well, the hell with you. We're going to play better than that. You know, the band played great. It was just awesome. And at the end of it, um, I think, I'm not sure how it goes. You know the, this part better oh, than I do. Yeah, I can, well, no, yeah, I came down and did sound for the gig. Yeah, Darren was doing the sound. And the other gentleman there, Flex? Mm -hmm. Flex. He had a laptop plugged in and we had optical out and he recorded it. So, with that going and the wicked performance happening, we managed to get a whole bunch of tracks. Yeah. Which Go ahead. But the genius stroke that Darren is too hesitant to say because he's modest and does replace my guitar parts. But anyway, <laughs> he, he's, he didn't tell us that we're being recorded. Okay. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. Do you, you know, as musicians, we know how awesome that is. Of course. We had no clue. Yeah, no so pressure. we let it fly. And, and uh, again, as, uh, as I said, we got uh, 10 usable, 11 actually usable tracks off yep. the thing. Which is amazing. So it was like a kind of a gift, you know, from uh, wherever, from the higher places and um, the music higher places. And uh, then um, Darren did a stupendous job mixing it. And because it was at first, I went, I, I don't know if we can, what can we rescue out of this? Right. But he did a great job. He really did. Uh, and uh, uh, boom turned out to be amazing and then we were all thrilled with it and and we we um, we went so far as to uh, release it in a, a spectacularly good time period you know about this if you release a, a, a CD um, I believe and don't quote me you find out for sure for yourself but I believe it's between oh September or maybe the 1st of October and the 13th of November, you get two cracks at the Junos with one CD. You get two years you can go. Oh, okay. And if you didn't know that, all the people that are putting you know huge money into bands, they know it. And you just watch when the releases are. Now, that, there's always exceptions. Mm -hmm. But in my life, I was always, my cycle was always off that cycle. For some strange reason, it just took long enough to get the CDs and everything. Boom, I could release in, in that time period. So we actually did submit it for consideration for nomination for a Juno, for the best blues album of the year. That's pretty complicated, isn't it? You all can meet with my lawyer later and they'll <laughs> figure it out. It just means we, we hope like hell that somebody will listen to it and not throw it out and maybe we'll get nominated. One of the five or six to be nominated. That's amazing. For Juno. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the best of luck with you. For oh, that. thanks, thanks very kindly. I mean, it sounds to me like that you know the performance was there, right? Because you know, no pressure. You didn't know it was there. You let it all hang out. Exactly. And yeah, uh, yeah that's a that's a great story. Yeah, yeah. We're very, very fortunate. Very fortunate. So, did this CD was it just back catalog, or was there anything that was newer on there? Uh, okay, in terms of uh, songs. Yeah. It's like Excellent th question. There's four brand new original songs on there that were never recorded in the classic formal style there they are that's their release is from a live recording so there's four original new tunes on there there's another song that's never we've we've well we did record once but it it, it, it just didn't make it onto a cd 
uh, but but this is a live recording of that song, and it, it's never been heard before. So there's five that have not been heard before on the CD, and then the rest uh, are um, from uh, the uh, Willie, the Great Willie Mammoth album, <laughs> which is what we did prior to this live CD, and prior to that, we had the Warren Cliff Sessions. Uh, which is French for one, or you could just imagine that was a, kind of a Michael Jackson thing, the Warren <laughs> the Sessions, <coughs> and or James Brown rather, and and uh, anyway from that also a song. So it's it's a pretty good representation, all around really when I think about it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And where would people be able to pick this up? Village Idiot uh, would be glad to uh, to. Um, we just as a matter of fact were there today restocking him, so that's good. Um, uh, that's about it. And then, of course, my website, which is uh, Bill at... Uh, no, it isn't. That's my, my email address. My website is BillDurst.com. But my email address is on there, too, so you can email me. Email me. But it's um, BillDurst.com. And then right now we have all... Th I've, we've, Darren and I have done three CDs, and which is, this sums up the entire phase of this my career, so, f you know, this older phase. And... Um, they're all for sale right now. Sometimes we're out of stock, though. So, but there it is. Excellent. Do you uh, now your website? Do you handle your commerce yourself? You don't have anything set up on iTunes or anything like that. You know what? Um, I am the worst businessman and the worst promoter in the frickin' world, <laughs> and I mean it. I'm. I. You know, the more I have a little success in my career, the more I think I know I'm the worst. But anyway, I haven't just got to it, you know, how stupid is that? But anyway, forgive me, all you young bands with 25 CDs on CD Baby already. I'll try and get mine on there. You really should. You really I know. Should. I know it's stupid. Well, I wouldn't say that. I, w I would say it just it's going to give you an opportunity to reach an audience that may not, you know, be, Absolutely. Able, be Absolutely. able to hear your stuff otherwise. Right? What I know would I've you recommend to me, Jim? What would I recommend yeah, to you? Seriously. Well, I, re I, I registered through CD Baby because okay. of the digital rights management yeah. work. Uh, and so what you can do is you, you have the option to choose how you want them to distribute your music, whether yeah. it's cash only or if you want your music to be available through streams. Yeah. So I get royalties every time one of my songs is streamed. And sometimes it's nine cents. Sometimes sure. it's, you know, 11 cents, whatever yeah. they pay out. Mm -hmm. um, but still, I think it gives people, even if it's a preview or whatever, it gives them the opportunity to buy it. I think, you know, there's a lot of bands out there that want to give their music away because they want to get it into your ears. And uh, and I think maybe, not that they're devalue devaluing their music, but I think they believe that the best way to get it into people's hands is to, to give it away for free. And there's something to be said for that. I mean, uh, you know, even the band that I'm working with, Two Crown King, their EP is available right now for free. Uh, off of the website so you yeah. can go and pick that up but I think at some point you have to realize that you know your intellectual property yeah. the, the time and, and money that you've invested into it that's worth something to somebody well right? that's right and I find for sure that if people have to pay for something uh, they value it more exactly even if it's you know even if it's just a small amount of money right so CD baby you can register um, your music, like I said, they handle all the rights for you. I think out of all the ones that I checked out, they're, they're the most affordable. You have to get a barcode yeah. registered for a music. I'm, I'm all up on it. the I'm all up on the details. There you go. Uh, I'm I'm shamefully up on the details, but I just want to get your recommendation, just yeah. because, you know, who knows? Maybe there's a indie network somewhere or something like that. Possibly, possibly. You never know. And nowadays, online is great because, I mean, you can handle that yourself, right? You can, oh, yeah. You can direct to yeah. user marketing. I mean, you, you really, the need for uh, a record deal nowadays, not so much. I mean, the record labels, they, they really don't put the big money into bands like they used to anymore. Now they're not willing to take the risk on people. And, you know, there's a lot of bands that DIY their own recordings that sound fantastic, right? And, you know, maybe a distribution deal would help you get it into record stores, but are people really buying music? You know, HMV in UK now is, is going under. So I don't know if it's a matter Actually, of time before it's that. no longer going under. It's no longer? No. Purchased. It was purchased? Yeah, purchased well, purchased by another company. Uh, basically, the company that saved HM, I think it was HMV Canada, if I'm not mistaken, if I can remember. Bought but them, it, too? Yeah, basically re is resurrecting that. It's a great story. Yeah. Well, you know, awesome. I don't, I don't want to seem ultra-naive because I'm not. You right, know. of course you're not. But, um, yeah, I'm just slovenly. <laughs> uh, Sloth-like. 
uh, slow on the business side of things. Well, that's fair. Well, for some of our listeners out there that may be trying to find a way to navigate through it, I mean, there's certainly a lot of options, but uh, yeah. you know, you can you can handle a lot of that yourself, and and obviously is the case with you and in, in being you know selling it through your website. So yeah, we encourage people to go and check it out. I'm actually yep. I don't have a copy of this, and I, w- I would love to pick one up off you. You will uh, with your permission. Um, so that said, I'd like to get to a track here from another band, and when we come back, Bill, I'd like to ask you uh, about you know maybe some interesting road stories that you can share with us of sure. some of the bands that you played with, because sure. of course you've you brushed up against some uh, some talent out there, right? And I'd yeah. love to hear about that. Yeah. So that said, we're going to get to a band. These are some of my buddies um, from a band called The Mercy Now. This song is called Hard Times on the London Indie Underground. now with hard times here on the london indie underground we're looking to get those guys booked in for an in studio performance hopefully in the coming months uh you know a couple of those members have been uh, friends of mine for quite some time and and infrequently play london but it would be great to have them in here so you guys can see what they're all about and uh, i'll tell you great energy uh great front man too um the former members of that band were in a band called shikasta which played with James Brown, they did uh, they did a date with them, which they were bes- besides them- themselves to be able to do. So hopefully we can get them in here. That'd be a lot of fun. G, how's the stream? Good. Kind of quiet right now. Kind of quiet. Yep. Talk quiet. us up. Hey, if you're listening, you want to chat with us. If you didn't know already, on the right hand side of your UStream page, there's a little chat window. You can harass us. Yeah, please do. Now, although it will not allow you to, t- to type expletives, <laughs> which um, we learned last week. Right. So you have to p- type in, you know, asterisks or yeah, you know. We, uh, or just not swear. Yeah, Tyler did uh, clear up that the weekend, uh, there's a new one and an older one, both from London. Both from London. Yeah. Oh, well, thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. But I think the one that just played last week was the reuniting of the old one. Mm. 
but it just gets confusing, really. It's the original weekend. Yeah, the original weekend. And the new weekend. Yeah, which would be, I guess the, the original weekend would be Saturday, Sunday, and the new weekend is Monday through Friday for those. If they all play together, it would be the new original. New original It'd weekend. Be the weekends. The weekend, yes. <laughs> the weekend again. Yeah, the weekend. <laughs> that would be the reunite. The yeah. reunite the Who's again. the weekend in the band? Anyways. <laughs> well, geez, not their success anyway. I heard they played to huge crowds over in. In Japan, somebody's stuff. been kicked out of every band. That's, <laughs> That's why true. I always say that. Mm-hmm. Gary, you've been kicked out of a band. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'm I'm the guy that leaves. I'm the one who just says I've had enough. Like this is dumb. Uh, so you have been kicked before out. the before the kick out. Before the kick out, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It works out well. You can I can still hold my head up high. <laughs> then I can still put it on my resume. Ex- exactly. Yeah, I play bass for those guys. Yeah. They hate me because I quit, but whatever. <laughs> sounds, like, sounds, sounds like a bad news episode. <laughs> I refuse to quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Bill, you've yes. you've toured all over this country. You've toured Europe. Have Safe to bit. say, you've been you've seen a lot of this a lot of this earth. So, I wanted to ask you with uh, you know I'm kind of reading up on some of the artists that you you've performed with, but mm. in the time that you spent on the road, what would you say are some of the more memorable times that you've had with bands? And the reason I ask this is because. I've I've played some little mini tours and and played with some bands before and and felt you know a bit of a disconnect. We were the supporting act and you know. Did they sign an eight by ten for you though? No. Oh, no. April Wine did for me. They did. Thanks, Miles. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, you know, in terms of time on the road, you know, bands that you had the opportunity to connect with and forge relationships with, and some of the more memorable ones. Yeah, forging and connecting with. Hmm. I remember uh, um, at the London Arena, um, uh, Rush, and we did we did a mini tour with them around the province, and uh, there were the three guys in Rush, and I think they might have had two albums out, maybe. And uh, <coughs> there were the four guys in Thundermug, and it was like this. It was kind of like this, you know, strange film, and we kind of walked up to them, and they were sitting there, and we were there, and there was a seriously awkward silence, kind of like, hey, man, you know, what's happening, you know? Because we, I'm, I'm telling you, just not so, not that sociable kind of, really, if you had beer or some other kind of something to smoke, we probably would have been okay. But anyway, so we walked up to them, and all of a sudden, I heard the drummer for Thundermug, who was looking directly at Getty Lee, do this. Fly by night! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> And that's all he all he did, and it was an in joke in our band. <laughs> it was an in joke where, you know, because it was all competitive, and they weren't as big as they are now back in those days, and all the of rest. Course. And then there was more awkward silence, and we just kind of went, "Well, you know, see you later." And that was about it. So that's one road story. Um, <laughs> later on, just to really put a punctuational point on that story, um, there was a dispute at. Um, one of the rush gigs as to who was going to go on first. It was in London, right? Er, and it was really, we thought that we should go on second because we're much the bigger band than Rush in the city at the time. And our our manager ended up booting their manager in the nuts. And um, I, so I think forging relationships is, is really what we were about. <laughs> um, <coughs> And obviously we didn't get on any other tours either uh, after that. So um, uh, let me see. Okay. Well, you know, some really cool stuff. <laughs> some really cool stuff was like uh, playing at, uh, I'm, I'm really seriously, uh, Aerosmith's first gig uh, in Canada. Uh, we opened for them at Massey Hall in Toronto. And that was just fairly thrilling. But unfortunately... Steve Tyler was into, uh, um, you know, l- turning around and looking at the drummer and then stamping his feet, to, trying to get him to go faster, you know? And the drummer was way up on a, on a stand, and I'm sure he was up there so that he wouldn't come down and kill Steve, right? Because he was just like, come on, man, you know? <laughs> and I learned that bad habit from Steve Tyler. And I'm, I'm, I apologize to all the drummers I worked with who, where I turned around and went, come on, man, go faster, you know? Anyway, that was one, another thing that we with forging relationships and uh, <laughs> uh um you know uh, i remember playing uh a gig with little feet yes and 
this is quite the opposite. This is now um, a story about their drummer, who is a, um, a, a Richie Hayward or Hayworth. I'm not sure, but a serious. The rhythm section from that band was the Cat's Incredible. Ass in yep. the seventies and all the rest. And I remember him being a comp such a gracious per person backstage. He, he, he blew me away. There are some musicians. Uh, another guy is um, um, uh, Brian Howe uh, from uh, Bad Company. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk to them, you, you know that they ha either they've been through a, a, a recovery program or, and I'm serious, you know, they have a level of spirituality and, and generosity and diplomacy that is just astounding. And I never met the the drummer for little feet before and hi how you doing just shoot the poo a bit and then move on because there's a lot of people in the backstage and kind of milling around a bit and then I'm standing there and all of a sudden I see him coming towards me and he he he's leaving so he comes up to me and shakes my hands and nice to meet you what <laughs> I just about fell over it, and and so there's a wonderful level of gentlemanly diplomacy that some of these guys do achieve after a lot of alcohol and years of addiction. Anyway, <laughs> so um, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, that's the twelve. Oh, I don't know what else. You know, you know. There's, you know, you could say there was debauchery and all that stuff, but it's better to leave it up to people's imaginations, because it's surely better in your imagination. Do you have a, a favorite show that you ever played? I mean, we talked about it earlier that those moments. But, uh, I had a lot of fun playing right now uh, for your show. Fantastic. I did. I had a lot of fun doing it. Thanks. That's great. Um, oh, favorite show. Oh, man. I mean, you're talking about my headspace as a human being. I mean, you know, most of the time I've played in my life, I've just been just terribly hard on myself and terribly uptight and not really very relaxed and that's fair and and you know trying to play that just just scared shitless that if i wasn't as amazing as i could be that you know i, I either wouldn't go over people wouldn't like it or worse people wouldn't like me you know and uh, so i'm kind of maturing a little bit so a lot of the shows that you probably would have thought wow this is the you know amazing well when i think about it there was one show that i do remember that i thought was amazing you know, seriously, it's just popped into my mind. We were just very young, Thundermug, and we'd moved to Toronto because we were going to make it. <laughs> and uh, um, we got a gig on a ferry boat <laughs> in the harbor at night. And the only problem with the gig was perfect, except the guy said to us, and nobody had ever said this to us before, it was totally young, very young, you guys, uh, if you want a drink, just go ahead. It's, it's, you know, just grab a drink when you want. Well, this was like, a, there was out of the, f you know, maybe four of us, including a road, no, no, five of us, including the road crew, probably four were real heavy alcoholics, or turned out to be. So I remember the boat swaying like this, <laughs> and, and, I, and you, I was swaying on a, a different sway, yeah. and things were kind of going around, and all of a sudden the fireworks went off over Ontario Place. And that kind of feeling is what I think you might mean by an ideal gig. But I, 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 I just been a too rather too concerned about playing and all that to really enjoy the moment. But now you know what? In, now that I'm older, I just really like to play. I, I really just like to play. I really like to get paid for it too. <laughs> um, I am fortunate. I am very fortunate. I, 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 I my career is on the rise, and I'm, I am making. Amazing amount of money compared to what I used to before. That's great. I'm not saying I'm rich or anything. I'm not. I still can't pay the bills and that, but it's going well. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> I owe him money. <laughs> so anyway, well, um, so are you you're planning on touring? You said you. Oh, I better. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> Darren goes a bit. Talk to me. <laughs> um, so you got a tour coming up, or? Um, yes, uh, we've got a little. Well, we're just you know flying out to uh, Saskatchewan for. Uh, a three-day blues winter fest, uh, Regina, Swift Current, and Saskatoon. And we got hired from this blues summit, which is amazing because there was 24 buyers from, from, from 
festivals all across Canada in one room. That's great. Wow. Dude, can I tell you a little story about that? Did please I tell do. you the speed dating story? No, please do. Oh, well, there's all these musicians and these 24 buyers in one room. And the buyers are sitting at tables with numbers on them. And it was, a th it was called speed dating. You got three minutes to talk to the guy who runs the biggest festival on, 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 on the East Coast. Go. And then, then 20 seconds left. Okay, move on. And so you had a chance. All the musicians had a chance to talk to each one of these festival guys. This is right in line with your ideas of cooperation and, mm -hmm. and uh, getting together and, and be doing community a little bit better. And um, Anyway, what did I want to say about that? I wanted to say that, I, well, I got a gig out of it anyway, which is a magnificent gig. Most money have been paid, and it's on the East Coast and the biggest blues festival they got there. That's wow. incredible. So that's good, yeah. But th I'm lucky, too, because, you know, I, I'm not really, I'm lucky because I'm, I, I, you know, you're not responsible for your talent, in a sense. It's, you, you've got what you've got. What, you've know, you got to work with it, right? right. I do work, work it. I work with my talent, but I also got out on the road. That's the big difference. Really, through Darren and um, Mr. Shepard, was it? Um, you know. Yeah. Anyway, he's not going to give me the man's first name. But anyway, I, I, got, I have an agent in Winnipeg. And because I do, I... Or Jeff Shepard. Yeah, Jeff Shepard, yeah. Who actually phoned this guy and said, you should book me. And it was, it was amazing. And this guy's a maniac. He'll just book anywhere. He books across Canada. Best agent I ever worked with in my life. And it's because Jeff, at that, that time, Jeff was working with the Matadors. That's right. So finished their record, and th then that's how you got that contact. That's right, that's right. And, and that's an, another example of how the, the small circle, right, of people helping people. Exactly. Jeff changed my life. I don't, you know. Now, I went and did it, though, you know, but n in, I don't know how much time we le have left, but I want to say a couple things. One, I want to say how awesome it is working with Darren Morrison. Because he's an uh, unbelievably talented guy. Extremely talented. He's humble when he's on the mic. But off mic, he's not. But <laughs> anyway, um, but and I just want to say that. And, and, and um, I think you're an awesome talent, Darren. I really do. And I, I want to go on record saying that. And um, uh, I wanted to say something about, you know, you know the, the scene for, for young musicians and stuff. M and it's what I'm trying to do, so I'm just going to suggest it, but it's what my wisdom of these years have told me to do. I, I have to get together a really good show. You know, everybody says this, everybody knows it. It's a long, long road from no songs for your next CD to playing them on stage and in a show sense. Um, uh, but it really, really, really matters. And um, having show that goes up and 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 then comes back and brings people into different places inspires them a little bit that I think is the ticket and that might get you 20 bucks at the door and if you're getting 20 bucks at the door that's a good thing and um, but it's all uh, you know like a, a, a better I don't want to say it, it's not it, it's it's a it's a deeper experience for the audience to have a, a combined a show and it's just little stuff guys in monkey junk I shouldn't really talk about them because they want a Juno and all that stuff but I mean they do stuff in their show that is just they just really hustle between songs you know and stuff like that uh, and you can get a bar band that just completely plays um, uh, uh, um, uh, one song into the other the whole night long that doesn't work either you know with no talking and no spaces yeah. um, so but somewhere in there is a really great show, and I would say work on a great show. Work on a great song. Work on lyrics that that touch people's hearts. You know, um, if it's touched your heart, it's going to touch everybody's heart, or most people's, except conservatives, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, <laughs> uh, don't get me started on my theory of conservative mindedness. Anyway, um, there's always people standing in the way. Time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I just said it, but we're, we're okay. Um, anyway, so that's the two things that I kind of wanted to say the most. Um, you know, um, you know the fact that uh, when I was 15 and, and we were in a 10-piece a, a rhythm and blues band here in London, Ontario, 
and one night the singer who was the toughest guy in town he was if he was he was a scary dude and it was well known you couldn't mess with him he was the toughest guy in town but he was the singer and so one night he we introduced him like because he didn't come on stage with us the band came on it's a rhythm and blues show right play the few songs first and then boom here comes mr kenny woods that was his name kenny woods and he comes spinning up to the microphone stand and we had carefully placed a condom upon <laughs> the um, microphone he killed us after the gig <laughs> but luckily they the union put the musicians association put the pieces back together because they needed the dues thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much that's some great stories okay like i said i was looking forward to that right i mean uh perspective is everything and when you uh <laughs> clearly when you've seen some of the things that you've seen mm -hmm. makes for great content yep so thank you oh geez my great pleasure so we've reached the end of our program so uh before we wrap it up and i've got one more song that i'm going to play um i need to take a minute to thank our sponsors so i got to switch the tile over here Boom. First and foremost, I want to thank Mr. Rorda, who's in the other room. Mr. Beard Olympics himself. Mm -hmm. Jason Rorda, Jason Rorda Photography, uh, London's premier photog. He's been coming here week in and week out and documenting this thing for us and posting the photos up so you can see what we look like. And, and of course, goes without saying we're appreciative of what he does. That said, you know, he is available for hire. I've certainly realized that, you know, there are things like Instagram and digital cameras nowadays that, uh, that people use as a means to showcase their band um, but really if you want some quality um, representation you know invest a little bit of money get a good photographer that comes out that knows how to work with light and work with you and he will cater to specifically what you're looking to do whether it's band shots promo shots live shots whatever the case may be some of his work is uh, being used on a couple of uh, um, albums that are going to be released here in the next little while so he's pretty excited about that and he's just a good dude and he's looking to help out the community so get at him if you're looking for some photos number two the submission academy brazilian jiu-jitsu run and owned and run by my friend stephen jane poolin at uh, i think it's 1055 uh, dundas street at egerton the school the school is blowing up right now if you happen to be interested in jiu-jitsu or seeing what it's all about uh, you know, because I talk about this week in and week out, uh, you're certainly more than welcome to drop by their school and check out their program. They got a great kids program, uh, which is blowing up right now. I think they got like 20 or 30 kids in this thing, and uh, you know, it's a it's a program that is tailored specifically to you through fun and hard work. Make sure you check them out if you happen to be interested. FullcolorCards.ca. My buddy Scotty Finlayson does some great uh, great work. He also plays in a band called the Fairmonts, which uh, plays around town a whole lot. I know the, they're at the Poacher's Arms quite often. Uh, good dude, good product, did some cards up for us. If you happen to be in the market for some business cards, make sure you check them out, get a quote from them. I'm sure you won't be disappointed. And uh, if you have an opportunity to meet him in person, just a real nice guy, class act. And last but not least, shirt for brains. Gary, what are you wearing? Speaking of shirt for brains, what does that say? Uh, zombies were people too. Uh, did you print that? Yeah. Of course you did. Yeah, of course I did. See, when you own your own screen printing company, you can kind of do what you want, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, the ro the misappropriated shirt, the 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 right uh, the right shirt for the wrong occasion, as I like to say. Right. So yeah. Yeah, that should be your uh, on the market. <laughs> the right shirt for the wrong occasion. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. So, if you can think it, Gary can ink it. Yeah, I should be a tattoo artist with that phrase, but right. whatever. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm good with. I, I created the phrase, so I'm good with it. Uh, done some great work for us here at mm. London Indie Underground. Um, certainly connected with uh, a number of bands, artists, and, and people that I know uh, that were all very, very happy with the work that you did for them. Excellent. Um, and can work with you as far as logos and all that kind of stuff. I know you helped us out with Surrounded by Water when we were looking to do some yeah, t-shirts yeah. done. Yep. So thank you very much for coming out as always. No problem. I always Glad appreciate to be your color commentary and your collection of fine guitars. Mm -hmm. I've been laid back lately because we have talent coming in. And it's kind of, it's different when when it's like when it's you and I yeah. and the guys just come in yeah. and then it's like all hell breaks loose especially if Siggy comes to forget that game right, those right, days. Right, right. but like when somebody like yourself yourselves where you have so much experience it's, it's awesome for me just to listen to the stories right because yeah. I've much like Jim I'm a musician I've done the same thing but I haven't got to the same extent I've had some great times I've had some crap times but I, I just love hearing the stories all the time. Me just too it just Man, brings I, you back I, like, right? sometimes like um, you know in the last couple of guests that we had like yourself Gord 
Gord Pryor, even Dan, and I just Dan Broadback, and I just sit here and I just yeah. listen, yes. and I'm like, okay, you can you just take over the show yeah. now. Yeah, just keep going. There's no need for potty mouth this day. <laughs> yeah. So we don't do the uh, the normal. We skew off pretty quickly. Did you, did you need me to swear more? No. Uh, well, I mean, you can. This Darn. If you, if you need to Darn. shoot. Shoot. <laughs> Dang. Thank you. So, uh, once again, I want to thank you two gentlemen for coming. You're welcome. Darren, always thank a pleasure. You. And it's an open door, so you're more than welcome to come back anytime, week to week, if you'd like to, to participate. You know, I should put together a, a bit of a producer's panel and have everybody come in and, and get uh, our take from it. And, you know, I, I'm, it goes without saying... And there's no question that I do own a recording studio, right? So I'm, you know, I was looking up to drum up business. But that said, you know, this is a big pie. And there's lots of room for, for producers like yourself to come in. Michael Marucci's in the other room here. And yep. he's looking to connect with, with people, too. So there's a, a great network of people that are available at your disposal if you happen to be looking for a producer or a recording studio. Uh, we, can, we can do that. That's what we do. We can help you. Nice. Cool. So Cheers. come back anytime. I'd appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Appreciate it. And always Thank looking you. for your perspective. And Bill goes out saying thanks again. Oh, my great pleasure, Jimmy. Thank you. Doors open anytime you like to come back in. If you have some new stuff and you you want to play, or uh, better yet, if you have any songs that you want to send to us that are coming down the pipe. I'm more than happy to spin it for you. Oh, or if thank you, you got so any much. gigs in the area, yeah. Let us know. Any shows? Let us know. Oh, thank you for that. Thank um, you. Our Facebook page is at your disposal. Um, yeah, so I've already put the, the network. I put his link up for the website. So Excellent. Anybody Thank wants you. to s- hear anything or buy anything, you're set. So. Nice. Thanks so much. Cool. No we have a full interactive website that's in uh, being built right now um, that we're going to be using as a bit of, hub, of a hub um, to connect bands and producers and you know fans. So we'll be making some announcements with that right now. We've uh, already uh, tasked somebody with it. And uh, I'll be really excited when it's up and running because I think that's kind of been, you know, Facebook is great, but, you know, they're, they're kind of being douchey with some of their policies and not being able to post this for free and do that for free and not being able to reach your full target audience. And I don't know what the hell that's all about. But anyways, the website's coming, people. It's yeah. coming. You're doing a great job, Jimmy. I just want to say that. Thank you, man. Really I appreciate it. I don't awesome. know what I'm doing, but, you know, we're figuring it out as we go along. And I got this guy to help me. And uh, you got but you I thank, thank you very much. Oh, I, I appreciate that. You know, we try to, uh, I mean, there's no egos here. We're pretty humble about this, and we, we're just trying to help out. Well, not anymore. Well, they never was. Mine's been, been deflated. Well, the money hasn't thing. hit yet, you see. So oh, yeah. Well, see, when that's you advertise, the next, then that's, that's, that's the next really phase, right? The next phase of this thing. And, and we've already been approached about advertising and, and whatnot. And, awesome. and uh, you know, the kind of the one thing that we've always maintained here is that, we, you know, money is not going to influence, um, you know, our services and what we want to do. Um, yeah, it's not about business. It's no. not. Ab- it's not about promoting your business. It's basically about promoting the bands and them, and the scene of music. And exactly. And if other people want to help out to d- uh, to do that, then we yeah. just need to forge the right partnerships. Yeah. Right. That's all it means. The right people will Beautiful. come on and and, cool. and be into it. So. All right, folks. Well, listen. Thanks for tuning in to another version of the London Indie Underground. Um, join us next week, which is February the sixth. Well, we will be joined by Chuck Daly from mm-hmm. the Salads and I Mother Earth. Yep. I'm um, really looking forward to having him come down and potentially another guest, which I'm still waiting on some confirmation. I can't break the news yet, but uh, we'll be talking about that probably online in the next few days. And then the following week, we're going to be joined by the gentleman from Messes and Miracles, right. which is February 13th. Correct me yes, if I'm wrong. I believe it was. So the 13th, uh, Messes and Miracles will be here. And these two gentlemen uh, owned a, um, a record label, which uh, was Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it'd be great to get their take on things and some fantastic musicians too. They're going to be doing an in, in, uh, in-house performance with us. Mm-hmm. The following Wednesday, which is the twentieth, we're yep. going to be joined by Lynn Craven, who's in Lonnie in the Garden. Okay. Uh, she's been around these parts for a long time. Great performer, great voice. I'm really excited to have her here. She's going to be doing a couple of acoustic renditions for us. And then after that, hopefully, I'll be in a position where I can make my announcement because I'm pretty excited, but I I had to be reserved about this. And then uh, we'll see what's going to happen after that. We'll have some pretty exciting things happening here at the London Indie Underground. So thanks for bearing with us. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I'm going to leave you with a song, a little bit of shameless self-promotion. But this is my band, Two Crown King. Our first show with me is going to be coming up March 16th at the London Music Hall um, with the salads, stale fish, and my son, the hurricane. It's going to be 10 bucks at the door. And if you went last year for St. Patty's Day, you probably saw me dancing up on the stage. I might have had a few drinks, just saying. Um, But it was a great time, and uh, I'm looking forward to playing my first show with them because we've been working hard with the new album, seven songs recorded, stuff's about to to get mixed, and then uh, we're going to hit you with it. So in the meantime, I'm going to play you a track 
from the old disc. Now, unfortunately, it didn't feature me. It did, however, awesomely feature Mr. Pat Maloney, who's a fantastic drummer. And, uh, you know, sad to see him leave the band, but uh, I got some big shoes to fill because uh, the guy's six feet, five inches tall. So he's literally got some big feet. That said, he's a great guy and uh, great band, man. I'm really excited to be playing them. So this is, uh, we're going to end off with Two Crown King. So this is you and I on the London Indie Underground. Hey, this is Scott. Hey, it's OJ. It's Good Child. Hey, what's up? This is Dick from Two Crown King, and you're listening to London Indie Underground. Change it so many ways. Cause people can change it so many ways. Cause people can change it so many ways. 